say again, it started. Okay. Okay, cool. All right, guys. Um, okay. So I'm Musa uh, Baloi. So I'll be handling this uh, tutorial session. Um, and Abby will join a bit later uh, to do the business understanding, um, as mentioned by JB in the morning session. Um, so okay, if I open this, um, I hope my internet is not too slow. Okay, so if I open the program um, in the week zero document, so basically we are in day two and uh, data science workflow and statistical thinking have already been presented uh, by JB. Uh, so I'll be taking you through uh, Pandas, Netbotlib, Scikit-Learn and modeling and deployment. Okay. Uh, so it will be more, I've run most of the code, uh, but I think it can be a bit more hands-on if we like, if, if there's something that maybe you want me to run um, that uh, you want to see. Okay. Cool. Um, so first off, um, just a little bit of, a, of an introduction. Uh, so we'll be uh, sort of using a sentiment analysis uh, use case uh, to sort of learn about uh, this concept. Um, I have actually picked up uh, these four tasks uh, from from this document. Uh, so 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 this day two is related to task two, and the part that we're looking at now is related to I think the steps five until eight, which is model training and validation, deployment, uh, model performance analyzer, uh, data drift. We probably won't be able to cover all of these things. Um, oh, so, sorry. You're not you. sharing I, Thank you, thank you, my bad. Uh, okay, let me just do that now. Okay, I'll just turn off my, okay, I'll just share my screen now. Just give me one sec, sorry. Uh, Okay, just one sec. Okay. I think, okay, just lost, okay, there we are. Okay, so I'm gonna share my screen now. Sorry about that, guys. Please let me know when you see it. You can see it now. You can see it. Perfect. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. It seems even the more people have joined us, uh, with over 70 attendants. It's good. Um, okay, so I was saying um, here, these are the sort of uh, about four steps uh, that relate to uh, to what I'm going to be showing you here today. Uh, and this is part of task two. Um, I think it's something that I'm not sure you'll see in the deliverables if you have to do it or not. Actually, I can just go there now in terms of deliverables. So this is for Tuesday, for Tuesday, this is what you're gonna need to be delivering. Uh, but anyway, the task is there. Okay, cool. So this is uh, the part that I'm gonna be showing. Uh, Pandas, MyPortLib, Scikit-Learn, Modeling and Deployment. Okay, cool. So I'm going to be doing it uh, via notebook. Uh, so uh, I hope it's clear. Do I need to increase the font? Can you guys see my notebook properly? Anyone? Yes, we can okay. see. Okay, perfect. So, um, Ilya was just uh, explaining that, you know, these are the two 
uh, it has two steps that I've pulled out from, from that uh, document. I just said, uh, actually, I will I share this notebook uh, in the Tuesday folder um, when, when we're done with this, so you can follow along. Cool. Uh, so um, what I've done is in order to sort of explain, you know, Pandas, Netbotlib, SKLearn, uh, et cetera, I've, first I've just, you know, we, we, the seven data that we need to get. So I'm not sure uh, based on your uh, operating system, you might, we, we get might work or you might need to use Kel, right? Uh, and then you'll be downloading uh, data from this uh, URL um, at the University of Stanford in the USA. Cool. So we have this data, uh, which is really, um, okay, if we scroll down here a little bit. So it is described uh, in, in, that, in this uh, ACL IMDB readme. Okay, let me just do this. Uh, let me see if I can quickly upload uh, so that you guys can maybe uh, skip forward if you need to. Let me just quickly upload that. Next to upload this so you can follow along. Okay, so I choose the and this is the notebook file. Okay, so I've just up, I'm sure um, um, this folder has been shared with you guys, right? So I've replaced there was an old sentiment analysis uh, notebook, uh, but I've since updated it. So I've replace it with the uh, up-to-date one. So for those who are willing to follow along with me, you can download it. Um, so you'll see there, um, if you've run uh, the notebooks, I think what you can do um, is go to uh, sell and then run all. Um, and then and I'm not sure who else is, is online. So if you have experienced any issues, then they can assist you uh, to get that sort of result. So you can have uh, this, this setup that I have. But anyway, so we download this data uh, into our local directory. Um, let's see if I can show you. Okay, so ACL IMDB, okay. As far as it's been extracted, you've got test, a train, and then you've got uh, a few other files in there, right? Uh, so what you can actually do within a notebook is you can well, you can extract. So when you see, uh, we call this, uh, I think it's called a, a, a bang. Uh, so it's actually you are running a command on the terminal when you do this on the on the notebook. So this is as 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 if you are running it here on the terminal. So that's how it executes. Cool. Uh, so we've extracted that, and then you can see. Uh, on the netbook, what files are in there, right? It's the same files that, are, that I've shown you here. Okay, and then now, yeah, so you can even, you know, see subfolders, whatever is in there, um, IMDB. So all of these files have been explained in the readme uh, in terms of the contents, uh, what's in there. Uh, basically, we have uh, here, it does say that we have 25, thousand training uh, files uh, or actually reviews uh, which are split into train and test uh, so to, uh, each, each um, folder test and train have got 25,000 reviews so these are actually movie reviews um, so which we're going to be using to figure out uh, whether the review is positive or negative Okay, and it does say here that uh, it's only, so a negative review is one that receives a score of less than or greater than, or greater than, um, sorry, uh, less than or equal to four, or, and then a positive one would be uh, a rating of uh, greater or equal to seven. So this is out of, out of 10. And they've actually left out uh, neutral reviews. So we're only looking at two possibilities, right? Cool. 
Um, so uh, one of the things that I do in the notebook uh, is there's some folders that uh, would need uh, at some point uh, during the running of this notebook. So what I prefer to do is, I mean, you could uh, really execute these uh, steps when, as and when you need them. So won't be using CSV sub uh, directory data process, you know, but it's better to just execute it here. And here I've shown you sort of different ways uh, of how to use uh, make directory to create it. Uh, yeah, so you, the, I, I prefer this format, which is, is clean, it's, it's a one-liner, uh, but if you wanna have spaces, then you, wanna, you might wanna use this quotation marks if, if the file name is a, a spaces in, in it, okay? So set up my directories like that. And then we have imports. So if same as imports, you might want to import, you know, uh, these libraries uh, and modules as and when you need them. Uh, but for me, I do it this way so that, you know, I don't end up having to import the same, uh, you know, library uh, multiple times. So if it's here, then I can see that, okay, uh, for example, from SKLearn, I've already uh, imported feature extraction, the text, etc. right? It makes it a bit neater. Uh, so that you're not, you know, uh, wasting computation, inputting, and, and, and you keep importing as you go. Okay, cool. So that's really basically uh, the setups uh, that we need uh, to, to execute the rest of the instructions in this tutorial. Um, so what is Pandas? Um, so Pandas really is a, is a library uh, that was built uh, for Python, it, it's, it doesn't come as part of the main, uh, let's say, Python uh, interpreter, but it's something that you install. Um, so I think it, some of these links will actually show you how to actually, uh, you know, it's, it's very simple, like in, you use pip, you can use conda, so just uh, pip install pandas or conda install pandas. Uh, so that library actually helps you uh, to like work with data right, uh, tabular data, uh, JSONs, uh, and a bunch of others. Uh, so I do say that here, uh, it's actually, it borrows from uh, a concept in R of data frames, which enables you to, to work with uh, tabular data, right? Cool. So yeah, so I've included these links here so that you can see uh, how it actually works. Uh, so I think, uh, those steps to the right. Uh, okay, just I have too many tabs here. Just okay, remove those tabs. So you'll see this is the actual uh, site for pandas, and it's got everything how to actually install it, uh, some getting started, uh, user guide, extra, etc. And the most important links uh, I've added here. Cool. So, um and how does it actually work, right? So we have, like I was saying, we have actually imported it here, right? This is, so this is for data processing, working with CSV input, output, uh, and, and it, there's a lot of, uh, in the documentation you'll see that it actually works with a lot of uh, data formats and not just uh, CSV. You can even work with Excels and etc. Uh, and I think even uh, Hadoop HDFS files, okay? Uh, cool, so now, uh, what we, we first do, uh, because this files that we have, uh, that we've listed up here, uh, and we also have here, uh, if we go into our local uh, directory, let's just work with train, uh, we've got negative sentiments. Um, it's loading a bit slowly. Um, I think I guess it's a bunch of files. Uh, but what we can do uh, quickly to see that, uh, we can come here. Okay, so we've already seen what's in, okay, cool. So what we can do here, we can just execute this. Okay, so execute this so that we can see what's uh, in there. Musa. Yes? So just, uh, hi, can you hear me? Hi, uh, I can hear you. Yeah, if so I'm I move not, a bit faster. no, no, if I'm not disturbing, can I just jump in now? 
because I need okay. to quit, I need to leave also earlier. So could I just provide and then you can continue? If that is okay with you? Yeah. Yeah, that's fine with me. Uh, I'll just pause here, uh, guys, and uh, Gabriel will take you through uh, his content and then we'll continue later. Okay, so I'll should I stop sharing my screen, right? Stop sharing my screen. Cool. I will also switch off my video in, in the meantime. If you need to just uh... okay. So I am sorry, guys. Like my session would have been in the morning, uh, but somehow. Uh, I was unable to attend it just because I had overlapping meetings. But so what I'm gonna uh, talk about, um, so you, do you see my screen? Yes. <laughs> Great. So what I'm gonna do just uh, is the first thing is about, so I wanna hear just one or two, just so that I can get from the morning sessions as well. So do you need to, to think about business, the kind of the, whenever you do a data science, you know, you have this crisp PM and the very first element of that crisp PM is um, the business understanding, right? And I want to hear just, what is your perception of that and if, by whatever you understand in business perception. So why do you need to understand the business uh, part? Or why do you need to start from there? Just one or two. Just you raise your hand. Yeah, can I go? Okay, Prince. Uh, hi. Hi. I think uh, uh, it's important to understand the kind of business uh, your uh, the, the person who is asking you to run uh, this program is doing so that you know how to fashion uh, or how to gather your information to know the kind of information that will be relevant to the uh, model that you are going to build for that person. Great, thanks Prince. Anyone else? And you, if you can add also on top of that, so where like your understanding of the business where to use it across your pipeline of like you know basically of your analysis whether call it machine learning engineering data engineering or data science so where does it influence in which context is it influencing uh, your business understanding one more person especially women anyone Okay, Lisa. Yeah, Thanks. Go on. Um, I can try. I think it's relevant yeah. to the domain of uh, giving business insights from your analytics and like the understanding of the data. So, for example, say you're working with healthcare data, you're not a doctor yourself, but uh getting a business understanding of the problem would mean that you'd have to do desktop research around the same problem so it also just gives you more information with regards to what you're doing okay okay so where which components would it influence do you which components of like the crisp tip? Okay, yeah, we have Prince, but I want to see new hands. Uh, 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 data collection, I guess, sorry. Okay, great, that's one, that's very true. Data collection is definitely, you wanna, uh, Johannes? Johannes and Stefanos, just, you can add one. Understanding data, Neron. Yeah, just to uh, 
add on what others say. I think it really influences uh, the overall process in the CRISP model because once you understand the data, uh, I mean, once you understand the business, we can basically have too many questions on one business. And once we understand what the business needs, we can modify our data understanding, preparation, uh, methods in order to fit our specific uh, questions. I think it basically Great. I think touches every part of the uh, CRISP model. Great. I think that's a very good answer. But anyone, uh, are you guys uh, adding? Yeah. Can I add one? Uh, yes, I'm just seeing. Yeah, go on. Okay. Yes, as uh, Saha was uh, mentioning it, it basically might indicate the data collection and preparation, but after all, it will affect overall, overall activity. So directly yeah. understanding the business or when we try to make the model data centric, it all depends on understanding the business. So that's okay. what I was saying. Great. So Brooke, Amal and Abel, do you have any unique perspective? So go on, Brooke. Okay, thank you. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, so uh, in my understanding, uh, business understanding means uh, it's all well about understanding the problem. So uh, we, as a data scientists, need to understand the 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 business, and uh, we have to try to understand the data we have uh, in that specific business uh, domain. So understanding the business is very crucial uh, and it will help us to clarify uh, the goal of the project or just the goal of the, the thing we are doing i guess thank you Amal, sorry, Amal. Yes, I believe business understanding will enable us to understand uh, the objectives and uh, the goals while uh, looking at the questions to answer. Great. So last, uh, just in this round, uh, Abel. Mm -hmm. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, it may solve uh, half of our problems by just understanding the data. Uh, and we can prepare the data for better visualization and better presentation of the data for its basic needs and for presenting for our business managers. Okay. I think, yeah, you, you all, uh, Margaret, sorry, like just, uh, I will just continue just uh, for the sake of time, but if you have a, a special like insight, maybe just go on. Like, let... um, it's probably not that unique, but I feel like um, understanding the business helps you to better the business by analyzing the past performance, and that can also help you to predict um, the future business practices and. That would be good for the organization. Yeah, true. Wonderful. I think these are really excellent. All of the ideas are great. Just it, the only thing that I can add with that is just an analogy. So it's really like it is the most important thing because only in academic situations that the business understanding has, let's say, not that much as much as important as in the business but you are being prepared for job and the job i think i don't say it if one in one sentence at some point and if you have forgotten it i will always remind you that for every dollar a company pays you they expect three to four times more dollars that you make them right if that is not satisfied they don't hire you or they will fire you or they they don't they don't actually uh, you know, have any intention 
if you are in the university, the intention of the university is very different. It is to the country will benefit from you because you know, if you no kind of whatever. Industry doesn't. You just they pay you so that you make them make more money, right? So in a way, it's a very, very, very simple model. In that element, it is if you don't know the business understanding or the business understanding is the same as like going to a city, you are going to a certain country or a certain place, a destination. If you don't know the destination, it's basically you just don't know. It doesn't matter which way you used, whether you fly there, whether you used bus or train. It doesn't matter whether your work was amazing. It doesn't matter whether you dressed really well. All this example, dressing basically could be amazing model, right? Uh, basically using some of the techniques like, I don't know, like flight or something, call it like this kind of data uh, exploration. It doesn't matter. If you're really not clear, you may be missing. It's like your destination is someplace and you are someplace that's it. You don't get satisfied. So the business, in this case, the CEOs and the people who don't care how you do it, they what matters to them is like whether the business questions are answered. So very, very, very clear. It's like everybody wants to understand whether you, when you go to them, that you actually understand their business. In the interview, they will ask you. During your day-to-day -day activities, they will, you know, they will understand that you will be measured. You will be measured. So this is your standard ruler. So your height in the industry will be measured by how good you understand. When people tell you that you're junior, you're junior because you don't understand. You don't really map the business problem to the data science problem, right? Or to the machine learning problem. So you must think like the business problem we repeat it again in every of the challenge we have called overview or business context because we think that is the most critical element that one has to understand so as you may see or as you may just now understand i cannot overemphasize the importance of really paying attention if you want to be senior it's not about your skill sometimes that makes you senior or junior it is your way of translating a business problem to a data science problem or a machine learning problem or a data engineering problem or a web three problem and some other names for that there is a field on its own it's called a solution architect right basically just that that maps between exactly what i am saying and that is fully about business understanding you know people go to the so like the, the understanding uh, or like the higher one even uh, a dedicated person because they wanted to understand you know the business to the actual technical problem and in our sense, in the data science, machine learning, data engineering, and Web3, what we call it is there is always a business context. And you one, usually a senior person, understands that and translates it into an actionable item to be carried out by a machine learning engineer or uh, you know, a data engineer or a Web3 engineer, right? So that is the case. It's like you must just always remember to grow you don't know, you know, like the growth that you need in this area of business understanding is much higher to be a senior. And that's why it is the, the most critical. So just, you know, I'm just trying to make it the most important thing and that you must pay attention in everything you do. You must say like, what is the business understanding? By a business understanding, it's like, what is the client's need? Why are they deciding? Sometimes the business understanding could be as simple as they don't know. They don't know if it helps them. If they don't know if the machine learning is a suitable uh, way for their problem, that is kind of a business context. Now you want to tell them, you want to do your analysis, collect the data or get the data such that you will be able to answer that question. How? By just saying like, is will the gain that you require or the kind of like the gap that you have in that business, will that be solved by a machine learning uh, technique? The question can be yes or you know the answer can be yes or no but still that you are solving a business context you know your context in this case are they using machine learning for example for planning so that means when you understand for planning you don't need so detailed analysis because you don't need it it's for planning so for planning you may need just fast but very uh, simple method the error can be a large it's fine are they using it for decision making like, are they just specifically, for example, are you working for uh, uh, an insurance company who is kind of determined you're going to use your solution, your model, 
such that they will, for example, use that amount to say to people, uh, you will pay a premium on insurance amount of this amount. That then must be right. That's not planning. That's kind of decision making. And it needs to have the smallest error possible. And then if it is a medical case, like if you are just using building, you know, machine learning to, to actually respond to people for kind of like, let's say Alexa or, you know, um, uh, okay, Google or uh, Siri, then in that case, you need really just to be able to, to a point, there is a point where it's not usable and there's a point above that it's usable. Same if it's a medical situation, you know, something similar that you must have like the highest quality. If you are putting that machine learning model in to autopilot a plane, you know what it requires. It requires the most important, you know, rigorous way of testing, right? So all of these are kind of understanding the business. Like what is the business? What is the business need of this, this thing? And how, what is the best way to address? If you are doing so sophisticated machine learning for planning, then you are doing it wrong. First, you're spending more money. Second, it just doesn't matter. You are just, uh, in the noise, you know, or if you are just not being careful while you are developing machine learning for cars or you know driving a plane, then you know that means you will just kill a lot of people, and that's really not nobody is going to buy. So the company will go bankrupt, and not only that, it will be in a legal issue. And the same of many things. So business is exactly that, and that's why it's the the very first thing one has to understand to grow in their career. So hopefully that makes it clear. Do you have any one or two questions that I can uh, answer here? Is everything clear? Just if it's clear, just you can mention uh, it's clear. Yeah, uh, can you scroll the slides as you move on? No, so okay. this one wasn't for something. This is for something else. So this was much okay. more okay. Sorry. So. No, this was much more of a discussion on business understanding. So if anyone has, uh, hasn't has understood or hasn't grasped what I said, could you question or ask the question, uh, uh, Didier, yeah? Yeah, thanks. I wanted to ask, uh, maybe if you want to change something, maybe that can look good for the client, but in terms of money, and it, it is not adding much value in terms of money. How, how do you yeah. handle that? Like if you so, want to... Profit I, is, like, let me explain. Profit is one, only one component of a business, right? Um, because capacity is another, all right? So if you are adding capacity, it will in turn, so that means business is chain, it's connected. So for example, by it's not directly, you, sometimes if you are lucky, of course it will directly uh, influence the revenue or the profit. But most of the time it will provide a capacity or some kind of feature uh, in the product, which will, in, for example, by providing a more, you know, uh, recommendation engine, if you are building a recommendation engine, you know, people, instead of browsing five times, you know, scroll up, down, you might minimize by recommendation to two. And that means you, in, you really improve the user experience. If you, use, if you increase the user experience, there's in direct relationship that a lot more users can come in and that will relate to the company's KPI. So actually when we think of uh, the metric, we, we call it the key performance indicator. The company usually defines when they hire you, what key performance indicators they want to improve based on the data, based on the work you do. So that could be just profit. So if you are just you know, hired to help the sales team, that's directly maybe to the revenue or that. But it's not directly sometimes, it's it just you have to think of it in terms of the key performance indicator, the company, the CEOs or the administration has put. Is that clear? Yeah, got it, thanks. Great, anyone? Okay, so we have Brown. Hello. Yeah. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, okay. Can. Thank you. Uh, my question first: uh, How you how we understand the real problem when come to the business? Because there is no instruction, clear instruction when we see the real problem. Uh, the second one: There the model is matter in the business to solve the real business problem. 
Yeah. So as I said, it is actually really depends on uh, what you're solving, right? So it is why it's, of course, it's an art sometimes, but it's also science because you have to understand. I think the crisp DM is exactly that. The first element of it is just the business understanding. You basically talk with the client. The client could be internal client in a case. It could be the sales team. It could be like the HR team and, you know, whatever team that you are working on. And the second part is to take that one, and so usually, and to really find the data that would support. Because you are synthesizing evidence. You are synthesizing some kind of predictive model or exploration you, you might need to do. And so, and then you, you isolate the data or you define the data. And the same as exactly what you are doing this week. You know, this week we ask you one particular reason. Like, it is a Twitter. We want you to, uh, you know, find like how the economic situation in Africa is, you know, the current world global situation is influencing the economic situation, the hardships and stuff. Mm -hmm. So here we ask you to design it first. How are you going to execute it? What kind of analysis you're going to do? So that's what is kind of translating this. So you understand now, like we ask you one question because we, like, let's imagine, based on this, we might be advising governments. Based on this, we might be actually uh, advising some companies, right? So that's the clients. And why they want it, you don't ask, right? Like, of course, if, yeah, you can talk to them, but they definitely like are paying you because they thought the answer for that is valuable to them. Now, for you, your task is to really identify clearly what they want. What is really the business understanding, like the business context? Because so that you, when you translate it into data, into selecting data, into your database query, or into collection of data, into the analysis, and then into the modeling, into the deployment, it influences you, the entire system. So that's why it's like, you are trying exactly in this week, you should use it also. What is the business? You have to ask, what is the business question? The business interest of the current project? And you can exercise it with that. It is not definitely adding profit, right? It's not related to money. But if we use that one to advise governments, we may be taking a contract. We are delivering our contract. And because as a client, let's say I am the client, then I would be basically receiving money to, to that. So just for disclosure, we don't. Like this week's project is not for advising government, whatever, but it's the example, okay? So, but it could be like, if you are working, for example, if someone comes to you and say like a media agency, an advertiser comes to you and say like, okay, I want the Twitter, the influencers, like, you know, how, you know, I want to hire some influencers from uh, Instagram and, and, tele, and Twitter, but I don't know which one I should hire. Should I hire the same people for both or different? You know, they have an uh, interest. So what you did earlier, like just uh, the exercise, kind of is answering that business question. But understanding the business and really clearly identifying is essential. Okay? Okay, thank you. Great. Okay, so I think uh, I will just give Martin uh, because it's a new hand, and then I will just uh, continue. Okay, Martin. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you for the lecture. Um, my question was on the conversion rate between uh, an idea to a solution. Is there like a standard framework or like time that should uh, it should it should elapse before you convert the idea to the solution? I think this is a good question in a way that I think there are so there are strategies. Um, so if you look at how to do, you know, crisp DM business understanding strategies, you would be understand. So now you know crisp DM. So within the crisp DM, you can search and learn a lot of techniques, how to convert uh, business understanding or business requirements to data science uh, objectives. So it's called business objectives to data science uh, objective or machine learning objective. You can learn and read more about it. Uh, but the, the, the usual ways, of course, talking to the client, identifying, and then also on top of that, planning exactly what we gave you you know today's plan is to you really have to plan you know what kind of pipeline are you going to use which kind of model is, is suitable you know what what are the kind of the do you do some feature analysis do you do pipeline what kind of pipeline do you use so is it going to be deployed in this way or that way like where am i going to deploy it so should i do it dockerized or should i do it a python package am i kind of using 
uh, you know, Streamlit or something else. That you have to specify. So that in the planning, it just comes immediately. It's a, an iterative process. OK, so I think with that, I was unable, I think the time it takes, I was unable to give the probability thinking, but I will take, I will uh, uh, make a time on thinking about the probabilistic thinking, which is also this, this in the morning was discussed, but I want to continue it tomorrow so that uh, it is actually um, is a continuation of this, the business understanding and the crisp PM, but much more of also how you can understand what goes in the statistics like in, 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 in the machine learning whenever you talk of machine learning probability uh, any of that modeling there is something that you the, the, the foundations basically the foundations of like what goes in it why is it working why is the statistics working in the way that it does why should you trust uncertainty of like five percent versus you know 25 percent so just to get a certain common understanding we'll continue with that so next final question or comment from my side. Next comment. Next, if you are talking, we can't hear you. Hello, Abby. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you, Next, continue. All right. So let's say if we have a client from like health center, so do we need to have a background knowledge like in that sector in order to be like a good data analyst or machine learning engineer? So it does it, really necessarily. It, it is in some way, yeah, it is useful. And it sometimes, depending on the context, it may be without it, you can't do it. Because you need to understand the details, uh, the context that, for example, your product will be served, right? So, for example, if you have to deploy it, and how are people in that area interacting? You need to understand. So, if not, you, might, you, you may not have that domain knowledge, but you must, you probably need to work with a person with a domain knowledge. So, sometimes, uh, sometimes if the problem is standardized, then it's fine. But I would say, in, in, in principle, you always work with a domain expert in that area, especially if it is something, uh, if it requires deployment and if it is going into production context. So if it's not a research, you do, you do need to have domain knowledge. And even when you are researching, you do, you do need a bit of a domain knowledge. May not be a domain expert. You don't need to be a domain expert as a machine learning expert, but you need to understand something. Okay, so Grimata, just the final one. Sorry, Musa, and I'll just hand over and we can continue. Okay, so the question is asked, what are the best tools used in business analysis? I mean, again, it's different, right? It's just there is no one thing. Um, it, it can be, yeah, it's like, for what? Like, it could be from a, a simple just uh, Python exploration or not only that, a Google Sheet just to explore to, you really have to model everything. You need to run, I don't know, uh, GPT-3, so one of the projects you will do is kind of like doing NLP model and uh, using GPT-3. And that one was trained, you know, on hundreds of GPUs and stuff, so depends. But the common common problems usually are done as simple as, uh, you know, just Python simple models, as you are going to do now and this week. So with that, I will close it. And just we can continue this discussion tomorrow in my um, kind of probabilistic thinking business under, uh, and continuation of business understanding. Uh, so I will hand it over now to Musa. Thanks, guys. Cool. Uh, thanks, Yabi. Uh, okay, cool, guys. Um, okay, cool. So I'm going to share my screen again. Okay, uh, please let me know when, when you can see my screen.
Yes, we, we can see your screen. Uh, <coughs> okay, so I'm just I'm gonna switch back to the notebook. Okay, since some stuff is still running here, I'll try to show that some stuff. Okay, that's fine. Um, was anyone able to download the notebook? Uh, is anyone following along? No one? <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> okay, you did. No, okay. Yeah, we did. And I saw uh, here uh, on the chat some people were having issues with um, WeGet or Kel. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that uh, you were able to, go th uh, to get help and, and, and be able to proceed with that. Okay. Uh, so nonetheless, we have about eight minutes. Uh, so I'm going to try to be as, as fast as possible uh, without losing uh, most of you. Okay, so <clears throat> we're talking about uh, pandas uh, and some of the work you can actually do with pandas, which is really uh, to put in data. So the main uh, data structure within pandas is, is the data frame. Right, so you get your data from a CSV or a JSON file or an Excel spreadsheet, and then you put it into what we call a data frame. Right, cool. Uh, so, so what what we're doing here in the data preprocessing stage is we are looking at uh, so these files here uh, because they they are in this format, right? So I think this is a review number, and then this uh, underscore four, for example, would be the rating. So if you, as you can see, all the files that are in this directory are indicated reviews. And then you'll see that in the train uh, course, you'd have, uh, you know, uh, reviews which rate, uh, rate with ratings seven and above. Okay, cool. So so basically what we're, we're just synthesizing the data, uh, putting it from that uh, file format into a uh, a data structure of a data frame. So that's what we're doing here. Uh, that's what this uh, function does, right? It returns the data frame. Cool. Well, it gets the directory and then it returns the data frame. So we can do that. So I've already done it here. So if you notice that you see this a lot of times, uh, I have a training step and a testing step. Uh, so basically, uh, you know, in the so so that we don't have to rerun this. So we've already generated uh, these files. So there's no need to do it again. Uh, but when you're training, you you might want you you want to uncomment this part, uh, and then you know uh, comment out this part, right? To generate that data. So you don't know, I'm 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 comment, commenting it out now because we don't have to do it again because it does take a while. Uh, and I also have this. Uh, I think they call these magic functions. Uh, uh, percentage synthesis are in time. So this is that's what gives you CPU times, so wall time. It tells you how long uh, that part of the step will take. It, I find it uh, helpful uh, when running my, my machine learning models. So I know which steps are taking the longest time and what to optimize. Cool. So one of the things you can do with pandas, right? So we have these files, right? Um, you know, I, IMDB train, IMDB test, and then we load them into train and test, which, you know, these are actually data frames, the both of them, and we can see what's in the data frame, right? So uh, this is some of the text. So you have a text and then you have a label, right? Uh, I think these are just uh, generated by uh, by pandas, these indices here on the left. But the two main columns we have its text and the label. So the label being, so if it's a one, so it means that it's a positive uh, rating. And if it's a zero, it means that it's a, it's a negative rating. Cool. So that's uh, for, for train. And then we have for test as well, just looking at, you know, the first uh, uh, 10 uh, reviews in there. Cool. But you will notice that unlike in most, uh, you know, machine learning where you have, well, here they've actually uh, provided us with the actual labels uh, in test. So sometimes, you know, you don't have these labels. You only have get the labels for the, for the training set. But here they've, they've given us this, so we're able to, 
to evaluate uh, up the performance of our model. Cool. So I've just now taken out you know one one field, uh, one cell to see what the, the data looks like. So it's a it's uh, you know bunch of text, uh, like a, a large paragraph in some of them. So it's a long review. So there's a lot of text in here. Uh, so that's what you know one uh, example review looks like. And you can do that with uh, you know so uh, IMDB chain dot block, which says I want to take position zero and from uh, position zero I want the text. Uh, so that's the side note here. I've put in uh, a little comment uh, from Stake Overflow here uh, on the use of lock, so dot lock and dot i lock. Uh, it can get uh, confusing sometimes. Uh, so just you know uh, go through this and then understand when you must use dot lock and, and when you must uh, use dot uh, i lock. So shortly, uh, the one is for index labels and the other one is, is, is for location. Uh, but this example here, uh, if you run it, uh, you will see how, how that actually works. Okay. So uh, for this notebook, we haven't plotted anything uh, when it comes to Matplotlib, uh, but I just want to say that, I mean, there's a lot of things you can plot uh, with textual data, uh, but we haven't done that step here. But the, the one module that we use within Matplotlib is, is PyPlot. So when you actually import, you'll see most times uh, you, you will have, it will be uh, from, or import Matplotlib.pyplot as PLT, right? So that's what you'll see in, in many uh, machine learning notebooks. So that's the library that we actually use. Uh, another more sophisticated one is called Seaborn, which is really, it's, it's an extension of, of Matplotlib as well. Uh, okay, cool. And there are many others, but I think those are the most uh, popular that we use. And then I've actually listed, you know, some content here that you can look look at uh, to make it easy for you to find a way around uh, making use of the Matplotlib library. Okay, cool. So another one is, so, so uh, Pandas, uh, Matplotlib, and SQL, uh, they come with the distribution of Python, so you have to install them separately. Either with PIP or with okay. So uh, for our sentiment analysis, uh, we will be using uh, um, yeah, and there are other like uh, you know, this is one example of natural language processing. So a lot of natural language processing libraries, such as like from scratch. Uh, so yeah, so uh, yeah, so, uh, because of the time of the, the page, but you have uh, algorithms for regression, for classification, uh, for dimensional uh, reduction, uh, for clustering, etc. Right. So it's quite even neural networks uh, as can 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 execute those, can build uh, neural network models with with SKLN. Cool. Uh, so the modeling part. Um, I think I'm, I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure if we're able to continue uh, after four. Um, I'm not sure who, who's, who can advise in terms of that. Yeah. Arun or Gabby or someone, uh, Everest, are we able to continue after four? Yes. Uh, that much? Hello? Um, our time was uh, one hour, uh, which we just uh, yeah. finished. Yeah. Um, but uh, I don't know how many things you have left. Uh, uh, so, yeah, so I still have uh, modeling, uh, and it's a it's 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 quite, it's quite a bit. Uh, so it's a it's a bit of work there, um, and deployment really there's not much, uh, just a few nodes. Uh, so it could I'm not sure how long it could take. Um, but I'm not sure if, uh, because I mean, this is really a separate session. Uh, so modeling and deployment can be taken. So maybe uh, we can set up time. Or I can jump into 
someone else, one of the other sessions and, and, and continue with this. I'm not sure. Yeah, so I think we should finish it up in the morning when uh, we'll be talking about tomorrow. We'll be talking about the pipeline, so you uh -huh. can you can finish it up. Tomorrow. Yeah, I can finish it up there. We can actually start here uh, with modeling. Uh, but for for the three uh, libraries that we've talked about, which is SK Ben, Network Lead, uh, and Pandas, uh, are there any questions? Okay, I see a uh, Haki Zimana uh, send us up. Uh, you can you can unmute yourself and ask. Thank you. I'm um, Vitali Haki Zimana. So I want to ask about the this recording. Sometimes the network is cutting off for some of us. So I want to know how I can access this recording so that I can refer them. Thank you. Abdullah, are you are you online? Can you answer that question? From what I know is that they they are on um, on YouTube, uh, so on the uh, I think it's uh, ten academy uh, uh, channel. So there's a there's a bunch of videos there even from last year that you can see. I think on YouTube you can find it. I'm just not sure. I think someone said it's uh, after 24 hours they get uploaded. Uh, but if maybe JB or, or can can um, comment, if... uh, Abdul, I will help us with that because uh, he's the one recording and who has access to the videos. Yeah, I mean, but I do think it's uh, mm -hmm. try to resolve. I'll get back to people in the chat. Um, yeah, just in a bit. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just answering based on yesterday. I think someone asked uh, a similar question, and I think uh, maybe it was Anastasia who said it's about uh, 24 hours until they upload it to YouTube. Is there any other question? Um, is it Nigist? Uh, you, you can yeah, uh, unmute yes. yourself. Yes. Yeah, uh, I was having connection problem. So, can you go through uh, SK Learn, please? Like, can I go through it? SK, yeah. SK Learn. Yeah. yeah. So, SK Learn is is the library that we use for, to do machine learning. Uh, so it's got, in short, it's got a, a bunch of algorithms uh, that have already been implemented. Right, so you don't have to, instead of implementing, for example, a random forest, you don't have to, to do it because uh, the SKLN app library already is an implementation of that, right? And, and it's better than you know, it's it's optimized, etc. You know, it's using um, you know uh, linear algebra libraries like NumPy, you know, uh, under the hood. So it's quite it's quite performant. So instead of you having to implement any of these algorithms for machine learning that already exist, um, you know, you don't have to, you just have to import them. So if I go up here in my imports, um, so in my imports, so you see uh, all of this, uh, are, you know, things that you find within S, uh, SKLearn. So you've got, you know, uh, code, to do feature extraction, decomposition, uh, linear model, uh, uh, model selection, right? So, for example, here, this is one example of a machine learning algorithm that you can apply uh, to classify, to do classification, to classify, uh, in this case, whether a review is positive or negative. So, that's already been implemented. All you have to do is call it, uh, you know, do a, a fit, uh, and then do a predict. So, that's what you, what you may have, may need to do is, you know, provide your own parameters uh, to improve uh, performance, how quickly it, it, it converges to uh, to a proper model. But the, so SKLN has all those, uh, you know, like uh, algorithms already pre-built. So that's what it's for. Uh, and it's got other, instead of just machine learning algorithms, it's got other uh, parts, you know, that help with pre-processing uh, of, of, of the data. And even um, model evaluation as well. So that's what it's for. It, it's, it does a lot of things, um, you know, in, in that data science pipeline 
uh, that uh, JB was showing me earlier. So there's a lot of uh, code that you can find within SK Learn that helps you with that. Uh, okay. So maybe to add as well is that also, uh, you know, some of the things that JB mentioned earlier was that, you know, with pandas, you can actually do, you know, uh, you know, removing nulls, uh, imputation, et cetera. You can even plot uh, with pandas, simple plots, uh, but you, you can actually do that as well. So this, this, that's what these libraries are for, to help you in your machine learning journey so that you don't have to reinvent the wheel. So pandas is mostly for data processing, uh, SKLN is mostly for machine learning algorithms, and uh, Medbook Lib is, is, is for plotting with visual, visualizations, yeah. So that's what they are for. All right. In, in short, yeah. All right, before you import those three modules, Panda, Math, Math Lotlib, and SKLN, you were yeah. working on the setup, right? Yes, up here. Yeah, so yeah. what what is like the main target of doing this all setups? Like, isn't it enough to import those modules? Uh, so no, so it's, this is just your, so the, the current setup, I mean, you can do a lot of things uh, in a setup, uh, but for this one, I just, use it to create some directories uh, that I need in my file system. So this setup is simple as creating this for directories, right? CSV where I'll put my CSV files, data processors where I'll put, you know, some of the files that, you know, are being processed further down in this pipeline, uh, same as vectorized data and classifiers, which would be the actual uh, prediction model. So this is just organize my code. So it's, it doesn't really, it's not really an implementation. You can actually do it, you can actually, but it's gonna be harder for you, right? If you don't have levels, if you don't organize your files. So this is just for file organization. It's not, it, it, it really has, has nothing to do with, with uh, machine learning per se. It's just, you know, organizes, organization of your code base. All right, thank you, yeah. I got it. Cool. Uh, I think I saw another uh, hand. I think it was Bere Korede. Ah, yeah, hello. Hi. Yeah, so I do have a question on the sample data. Yes. So I tried running the the cells on Google Colab, but I get file not found errors. Okay. So did um, did you run we get successfully? or kill successfully yes okay so and and you saw it downloaded uh the the file the this is the file the tab of gz yes it did yeah okay so okay so i think what you can even in colon hello yes i'm with you so so even in colon you can actually run this this command right so uh, it's like machine mark ls dash minus la. This is just to show if there are any hidden files, but if you run uh, exclamation mark ls, it will list all the files that you can see in the current directory. So what probably happened with you is that you are looking for the file in the wrong directory, if it did actually download. So just, you know, oh. check your, your Google Drive to see where the file actually downloaded to. Okay. Right. Because on so I cell think they, 10, yeah, on yeah. cell 10, that's where the error started, on lists, ls, acl, b. So it says no such file or directory. Okay, so I'm just saying just run this part only, right? Okay. Just run, yeah, and then see what files are being listed there, right? Okay. And then yeah, from yeah. those files, okay, are you with me, right? From those files, you will see whether this acl imdb exists or not if it doesn't then it means that it downloaded to some somewhere else the way you need to okay. find it yeah all right uh, thanks okay cool uh let me see if there's any other question uh michael okay hello hello uh can you go to, uh, to the jupyter notebook mm -hmm. I know it's a silly question, but uh, I didn't get uh, the what, what is the use of the exclamation mark in the in the beginning of everything. Oh. 
Okay, so you see, if I run this here, I'm just going to con uh, control enter. Yeah. Yeah. It will run uh, that. It will run here in the notebook. But if I go to my terminal, right, all I have to do is write ls, right, without exclamation mark. So basically, it's just running a, a, a com. Okay, skip wrong syntax. Can you just do this? Can you all see my terminal? So if I run ls, so I'm just running it as ls. There's no exclamation mark. So it's just saying that you are not run. You don't want to run this command in the notebook. You want it to run in the terminal. So that's what the exclamation mark does. Mm -hmm. So if I run it in the terminal, I don't need the exclamation mark. But if I run it in the notebook, I need it because it's not. It's not. A, so you know, you you know, in the notebook, you have two types of cells, right? You have uh, if I if you look here, so cell type you have code, right? So here up here it's Python. So ls is not a Python uh, command. So if I don't have the, the the exclamation mark, it will think it's a Python command. So, but if I have that, it, it knows that, okay, now this is a bash command. It's a, it's a command that normally runs on the terminal. Yes. So that's what it actually means. So because LS is not, it's not, a, it's not code and it's not a, a markdown. So it's not really, so markdown is just like this. Uh, like this would be markdown. Yeah. yeah. So that's yeah. what it means. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. You're welcome. Um, let me see if there's anybody else. Um, I don't see any names now. Uh, I'm not sure if there's any questions in the uh, in the chat. I don't see any. So, uh, Biniam, this is just that we'll take. And if you have any uh, further questions, uh, just put. Um, yeah, you can go ahead. Okay, my question is there a way to import the Python script to the. You have a break? Uh, yeah. Hello? Just come here. Hello? Uh, could you type your question? Uh, you are really breaking. Okay, let me write my So we'll just answer uh, Biniam's question, and then if uh, anyone else has other questions, you can uh, type them in, and and we'll we'll take care of them there. Okay, I see another question here uh, from Fidel. Uh, what about TensorFlow? Are we going to cover it? I'm not sure if we have TensorFlow in the rest of the course, uh, but the, the this notebook that uh, we've prepared uh, that uh, you know we've prepared for today and that will finish tomorrow, uh, it's just really um, SKLN. So there's no TensorFlow there. Um, yeah. So TensorFlow really uh, it's it's more focused on deep learning. Uh, so here it's just you know uh, SKLN is more generic, not just deep learning. Uh, yeah. Uh, now, um, so the data set is, is what you download uh, using a uh, widget. Uh, but maybe, uh, JB, what we'll do is maybe we can, uh, I think the file is not that big. Uh, I'll just check if we're able to upload it to, to the Google Drive. But um, there is code cool that you can. Uh, I also think that they can copy the link and download it directly from the browser. Yes, yes, correct. Yes. Okay. Uh, okay, so Biniam is here. Is there a way to import Python scripts, the Pythons in Jupyter notebooks? Yes, uh, I think so. So, um, okay, show you here. I don't think I have any uh, Python file uh, on my directory, uh, but I'll show you. So I think here, uh, for example, if you have a, a Python file, uh, .py, you could just import it uh, with, with its name. 
without the dot pi um, extension. I may have to check that, but I think it does work. Because uh, sometimes, uh, in, in some instances, Python will have an, an issue with file paths, you know, uh, environment variables, et cetera. But I think you can, uh, you know, create a file. Uh, maybe we can do it quickly here. Uh, touch. Uh, .py. So this will create this file here in my current directory. It's just an empty file, but we want to see if we can import it. Uh, and then import EG. I don't know what's, why my uh, machine is so slow. Uh, but I think, uh, Biniam, you can, you can try what I'm, I'm trying to show here, right? You know, you create a, an EG.py file and then import EG and see what, if, if, if you are able to, to see it. But I think it's, it's possible in, in this way. Once you have in the current directory, you have the file, you can import it. When it's not in the current directory, then you have issues of absolute paths, uh, relative paths, et cetera. But I do think it's possible uh, just like this. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think with 20, almost 20 minutes, uh, you know, over time, uh, let's, let's continue the rest of it on, on Slack. And we'll continue with the rest of the notebook uh, tomorrow uh, before uh, the morning session. Uh, thanks, thanks everyone for attending. Uh, I think uh, Abdullahi, you can uh, end the recording. Thanks everyone. Uh, Abdullahi, are you there to end the recording? Okay, just check if it's available to click. Okay, I'm just going to switch out my video uh, until we can end the recording.